Hi Bobcats, this is Miss Lee, and today we're going to talk about box plots, also called or also known as box and whiskers plot. For some data distributions, you will need more information about the center of the data than just the measures of central tendency. A box plot is a way of displaying the data distribution based on a five number summary. Okay, these are the five components of a box plot. As we're going through, make sure you fill in your notes. You will also need to label the box plot example at the bottom. Okay, the first data component is the minimum, also called the lower extreme. This is the smallest data point in a set of data. So on your box plot, this point right here is the minimum or the lower extreme. The maximum or upper extreme will be the largest data point in a set of data. And here is the maximum point or the upper extreme. Then what we have what we call quartiles. They're values that divide the data set into four equal parts. The first quartile, also known as Q1, is the median of the lower half of the data set. And this would be your quartile one. You see you've got this box, quartile one, the first quartile is the left side of your box. The second quartile, known as Q2, is the median of all the data. So a lot of times it's called Q2, second quartile, but it's the line that's inside of the box. It's also just called median, the median. And I think that you will actually see it referred to as the median more often than you will quartile two, but you need to know that it's both. And then the third quartile, Q3, is going to be the median of the upper half of the data set. And this is your quartile three right here. You can't see it, can you? Hold on, let me take off my median. Here's your quartile three. It is the right side of the box. So these are the five data components that you need to know anytime you're looking at a box plot or you want to make a box plot. So let's practice. We're going to find our quartiles. Okay, the first thing you have to do, here's your data set, is you want to order the data set from least to greatest. Just like we did when we found the me median, the data set has to be from least to greatest. So let's go ahead and order them. And now you're ready to find the median, which is quartile two, the middle of the data. And this is just like normal. You can cross off the low, high, low, high, low, high until you get to the middle number. Or you can think of this as, <coughs> excuse me, as looking how many pieces of data are there. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, there's nine. And if we split it in half, that means we're going to have four in the lower half, four in the upper half, and 87 is the middle number. So 87 is our median. Okay, then we want to find the median of the lower half of the data. So that means all of the data that's to the left of the median, we want to find the middle number of this data. Now as you'll notice, there's four numbers. That means the median is going to fall in between the 41 and the 65. So to find what the median of those two numbers are, we just add them up and divide by two. So 41 plus 65 is 106. Divide 106 by two and we get 53. So the median of this lower half is 53. This is our quartile one. Then to find the quartile three, we wanna find the median of the upper half of our data. So the upper half of the data is the data that's larger than the 87. And again, we have four data pieces, so the median falls in between the two 91s. And the only thing that's gonna be halfway between 91 is 91. And we can show that by adding them together. We get 182, divide 182 by two, and it gives us the 91. So we can fill in our quartiles. Quartile one is the median of the lower data half, which is 53. Quartile 2 is the actual median of the data, which we found to be 87. And quartile 3 is the median or the middle number of the upper half of our data, which was 91. 
Let's do another one. All right, again, we start off. Here's our data set. We want to order from least to greatest. How many pieces in our data set? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's 10. And if we divide 10 by 2, we get 5. So to find the median, this is our lower, this is our upper. The median is going to be halfway between 72 and 78. There's not a number here in the middle, so we have to find that number. So add them together. 72 plus 78 is 150. Divide 150 by 2, and we get 75. So the median is 75. The median is also our Q2, so we can go ahead and label that. To find our Q1, Q1 is going to be the median of the lower half of the data. Luckily, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there's 5 numbers, so we can easily find the median, which is going to be 42. This is quartile 1, Q1, our first quartile. Now we already have our upper half of our data here. We want to find the median of that, and it's going to be 89. So this is our quartile 3, 89. I find that it's always easiest to put a box around the upper and the lower half of your data. And if there's a number in the middle, then that's going to be the median or the quartile 2. If there is no number in the middle, like here, then you have to find the mean of the two numbers. You're going to find the middle number, and then that becomes your quartile 2. Okay, so let's make a box plot. A box plot, or box and whisker plot, uses a number line to show the distribution of a set of data by using the median, the quartiles, and the minimum and maximum values. A box is drawn around the quartile values, and the whiskers extend from each quartile to the minimum and maximum values. The median is marked with a vertical line. So that sounds like a lot, but it's really pretty easy, and the best way is just to do one. Okay, we have a data set, or set of data numbers, a set of data, and this one I think we already did. Yeah, this was our example B when we were finding the quartiles. So the first thing you have to do with any set of data is to order it from least to greatest and find your quartiles. And we've already done this one. Okay, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to draw a box. And the box goes from the quartile 1 value, Q3, Q1, to the quartile 3, the third quartile, Q3. So you're not going to do it on the number line itself. You're going to do it a little bit above the number line. And you're going to draw the box. So here's our 53. This is our Q1. Here's our 91. So this is our Q3. Then we want to draw our Q2. We want to put this 87. And it's going to be inside the box. Because it's the median of all of the data, the middle number, we're going to draw a vertical line inside the box at our Q2, at our 87. So here's 87, we just draw a vertical line. This is our median or our Q2. Q2 median. And then you're ready to draw your whiskers. And the whiskers identify the minimum or the smallest number in your data set and the largest number in your data set. Okay, so we're first going to draw the whisker for the 37 for the minimum. We put a dot at 37 and then just draw a horizontal line to the right side of the box. This is our minimum. I'm going to abbreviate it. You're going to do the same thing for your right whisker for the maximum value. The maximum value is 97. So we're going to draw a dot at 97. And then we draw our whisker line to the right side of our box. And that's all there is to making a box plot or a box and whisker plot. Those five data components are what you need to make your box, you need to, or your plot. You need to know the minimum and the maximum values. This was the maximum over here. And you need to know your quartiles, quartile one, quartile two, which is the median, and quartile three. 
Let's do another one. Okay, here's our data set. First thing you want to do is order them from least to greatest. 9, 13, 19, 16, 14, and 19. You can see that the smallest number is going to be your 9. The largest number is your 19. Once you have them in order, you find your quartiles. Okay, so here we go. You know what, I actually want to do that with you. Here we have 9. Our next smallest number is 13. Then we have a 14, a 16, and two 19s. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is find the median of our data set. There's one, two, three, four, five, there's six. So when I divide six into half, I get three. That means there's going to be three pieces of data in the lower half. So I'm going to box those three, and then I'm going to box the three pieces of data that are in the upper half. So the lower half, the upper half. Do you see the median? There is no number in between the lower half and the upper half, so we have to find it. 14, what's halfway between 14 and 16? Hopefully, you can recognize it as 15. This is your median, or your Q2. If not, just add them up. 14 plus 16 equals 30, and then divide 30 by 2, and you get 15. You get the same answer. So this is our Q2. Now we need to find Q1 and Q3. Q1 is the median or the middle number inside this box. And we can easily see that it's 13. So this is our Q1. Our Q3 is the middle number in the upper box, which is 19. This is our Q3. Now, we're going to use the Q1 and the Q3 to make our box. So we need to draw a box from 13 to 19, and it's going to look like this. Here's the 13, here's the 19, here's our box. This is the Q1, and this is the Q3. See how the Q2 is in the middle, or the median is in the middle? That's what we have to do with our box. We have to put a line at the 15 to represent the median, or Q2. So I'm going to go ahead and write median, which is the same as Q2. That's this vertical line. And it looks like I kind of messed up here, so let me take that line off, because that wasn't straight in the center, was it? Let me draw another line. It should be at 15, so it should be right there. Okay, that looks better. Sorry about that. And now you're ready to draw your whiskers. Whiskers are the minimum and the maximum values. What is the minimum value of our data set? It's 9. So we draw a whisker from Q1 to the 9. It's going to look like that. And then we're going to do the same thing with the maximum value. Our maximum value is 19, so we need to draw a whisker from 19. But looky here. 19 is also the value of your Q3, isn't it? You're going to have that sometimes, where you're not going to have an actual line with the, for the whisker. Instead, you just put a dot there. So if there is no whisker, if, if your maximum or the minimum value is the same as your quartile 1 or quartile 3, then you just place a dot. And that recognizes that this is the maximum value. And that's all there is to drawing a box and whisker plot, or a box plot. So now you're ready for your independent practice. This is your first independent practice. Okay, if you'll look, this box and whisker plot shows us the average gas mileage for various sedans, which sedan is a type of car. You're going to use the box plot to identify the following. You're going to identify the median, the upper extreme. Use your notes if you're not sure what the upper extreme means the lower extreme, the first quartile, and the third quartile. And practice problem number two, which box plot best represents the data set? So here's your data set. You need to go through, find your five data components, and then find the box plot that matches.